All right, welcome back, everyone. And we're going to continue building our IK rig system, like what uh, Ubisoft uses. And uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of forward kinematics. Now we're going to move on to the next subject, which is inverse kinematics. And we're going to utilize uh, an algorithm called FAB IK, which stands for forward and backwards inverse kinematics. Um, it's a pretty simple algorithm. Um, so we're going to just quickly go through it, because there's tons of tutorials about this online. So I just want to quickly go through it. We'll look at the code, and then because the next video is when we're actually going to start really taking it up a notch. So let's just get some of the bas basics down. So we have our arm, right? It's three bones. I mean, not two bones. Let me draw this a little bigger. Ah. All right, let me just draw this bigger. There you go. So I can take up the whole screen. All right. So we have two bones, two joints, right? We have two joints of rotation. Here's our shoulder, here's our elbow, and here's our hand. And let's say we want this arm to touch this can of soda, right? So the FAB you know, stands for forwards and backwards. So that, But it really should be backwards and forwards, it should be back ID, in all, in all honesty. Because you, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to work backwards. Then you're going to work forwards. So by going backwards, here's, the, here's how the algorithm goes. So that's our end target. That's our end point in our uh, arm. So, you know, this is our hand. Draw a nice, pretty little hand. So we want that hand to touch that can. So to... So we got to work backwards. So here's the can, here's the end point, here's our hand. So what I need to do is calculate the direction vector between the can and the hand. The can and the hand. So I'm going to start rhyming. Um, <laughs> so now once you have the direction vector, you you, uh, you um, normalize it. So it becomes a unit vector, right? So it's a nice unit vector. So. And now the next thing is you have to scale this unit vector by the length of this bone, right? So here's the direction, and let's say this is where the length is. So this point should be pointing here, and the elbow should po be pointing here, and the shoulder stays where it is. Now you might be like, well, how the hell? <laughs> how is the elbow going to be there? That's, that's insane, right? Because it is insane. It's it's visually it doesn't look like it's going to work, but that's why it's backwards and forwards. All right, so that's it. We figured out the two points of targets. So we have the end target for this joint to be looking at, and this is the end point for this joint to be looking at. So now we're going through the uh, the forward kinematic uh, the forward kinematics way. So now we go back right to the beginning of our chain of of joints. So we have our joint and it's rotating and pointing in this direction right but we wanted the elbow to be here because this is the end of that bone so we create a length a unit vector right well no we don't have to make a unit vector we just have to make a direction vector so it's this point minus this point and, and these two becomes an array that you pass into another function so these are like just targets so these are just where we kind of want to be ideally so this we want to point here so we can use a look rotation function so this will rotate this point to here and you know like i said it since it's a bone it can't stretch it's just going to rotate in that direction all right so that's where the elbow is going to be even though we said this is where ideally we want the elbow to be it, it just can't reach because the bone doesn't stretch that far but that's okay you know, everything's triangles. So um, so now we're done with this point. Well, now we're going to work on this joint, the, the extra elbow, which is attached to the hand. So at this point, now that you know, now we exist at this point, now we'll look at the next target. And the next target is the can. That was the last target we actually did. If you, if you think about it, this is the first target, and that's the second target. But if we do it backwards, that's the last target, that's the second to last target. So that's the first point, goes to there. And this goes to that. So we know we have we have to keep track of all the transforms. 
So we can then calculate the world space of the new world space for the elbow. So from this point, again, we just calculate the, the, the direction vector from the, our new elbow position to the can and just say we want a look rotation. And we just apply it. Now, the, depending on how long the bone is, we actually be touching the, the can right directly or be almost touching the can. So it all depends. Like the, I really, draw a really long bone, so it, it'll probably end up touching it or, or um, exceeding it a little bit. And there you go. Now you can see we went from basically a straight arm to practically touching the can. So we just, and it's all just based on figuring out little targets in the back, going backwards, figuring out targets, and then using those targets to use a look rotation. And there might be better ways to do it, uh, but I'm using quintorians, and the only way I can kind of control direction is by using the look rotation. And we're going to be doing a lot of that, especially when we when we move on to joint constraints. Um, like I said, I don't know quintorian math, so I just got to convert everything to vectors and then use the vector math for that kind of thing. And then just kind of convert that back into quintorian uh, rotation. So there you go. We in, in, in the whole idea of inverse kinematics is that you can then do it again. So you can say, well, what's the direction? So it's the direction. And then you say, okay, this is the new target. And then you go backwards and you say, this is the new target. And then, you know, you do the rotation. Now it's here. And now it's actually a lot closer. So, and then what you can always do is, like, if you're animating, it's okay. You know, if you're going to animate every frame, you're going to do inverse kinematics for every couple of frames, and then slowly reach toward the hand, that's great. Unless, and else, if you want to, like, create, like, keyframes, and you want to be very close to it, you can do, like, end point and target point, and just do a comparison after every time you do your complete uh, fab algorithm and see how far apart these two points are like your hand and the can if they're like let's say you know under like uh you know less than which is actually a greater less than like 0 0.01 if that distance i would i would actually use distance squared because so this way you can uh, not deal with um square roots so you can just, because since you're going to be doing so much of this math, just optimization. So we take the, the distance here, do the square a length of it, and compare it to, let's say, square 0 0.1. Like that, we'll just call that like our constant. And if it's less than that, we're good. Else, repeat the process until we're about this point. And then when you're going to, if you do create that loop, make sure you have kind of like a, like a interval limit, like... You only want to do up to 10 times or like exit the the algorithm either if you hit it 10 times or you attempt it 10 times or you reach that much distance. So this way you don't sit there and do an infinite loop because in all honesty, um, I, I, I've experienced this in, in, in the series is that if you're, if you're working towards zero, it's very hard. I usually have a nice, um, I usually uh, have like a function called near zero. And I think uh, this, if it's less than this, I'd automatically consider it as zero. Um, I think the notate isn't, I think the notation is E6. Things one, one E6, I think that's the notation. Uh, but yeah, this is the decimal value of it. Um, so there you go. That is the algorithm of inverse kinematics. <clears throat> so let's start looking at some code. All right. Uh, let's see. So what we got here? We got our usual stuff. We got all our armature stuff to be put together. We got our dual quintorians and math in here because we need it. ECS, everything's built around ECS now. Uh, that nice six seven videos i made about creating the ecs framework um all right so we got our armatures let me take comment this out so inverse chain oh uh, actually let me show you something else first um i'm making a technical rig i'm making a component all it is just an array of bones 
So if you see, because I kind of want to make a tentacle that kind of can kind of snake around and things like that. So it'll be kind of cool just to experiment uh, doing it that way. Um, so we're just basically creating as many points as we want for our technical uh, for our arm, so we can just make a chain of joints. So, because uh, that's kind of like the idea around the UK, uh, Ubisoft's IK rig system. Everything's kind of built off um, uh, chains of joints. So, like a leg is a joint, is a, is a chain. Uh, arms are chains. The spine is a chain. You know, things like that. So this way, you can kind of arc everything based on it. So in later videos, we'll in the next video, we we'll really see what I'm talking about. Uh, why I'm using the word chains. I think in the video, in their um, demonstration, they they called it a chain. Um, so I'm just using those words. So it's uh yeah. So it's just like I said, the the chain is just a collection of joints, the overall length of the chain, and the count. And the one thing I didn't really really mention, I totally forgot. It's like there's there's this one case that you you really should do. Uh, I totally forgot. It, it's just an if statement, basically. Uh, so the idea is if I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here, right? And let's say this has the length of, I don't know, three units. That's how long this is. And then I have a, my can of soda. It's like five. Oh, wow, I suck at this. <laughs> five units away. So, like, ideally, the first thing you should really do is take this point and this point, correct, uh, create a uh, vector length, and then maybe do the square. Again, just so just to, to you don't do square roots. And if this distance between these two points exceeds the length of the arm, you don't even need to bother doing inverse kinematics. Just align everything as a straight line toward that thing. Because the hand, you know, the elbow goes here, the hand goes here, and he's like, oh, I can't reach. You know, that's it. So this one condition I did forgot to mention, like if you exceed the length of the arm, don't even bother doing inverse kinematics. Just align everything straight in that direction. As long as you don't have any constraints. So yeah, there you go. I just want to make sure because I just just remembered when I saw the length. I was like, "Why do you need to know? Why do you need to know the length of the chain?" And my mouse is stuck. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> so that's what a chain is—just an array of joints, the actual length of it, and I just cache the count um, because I'm using the word length, and because of arrays, length is used for also count. So I, I to make things a little bit more understandable. And instead of calling a function to get the length of the actual count of joints, I just cache the value. So one less function call to do. I don't know, it's length a function? I know in like C sharp it's a function, but whatever. All right, so that's IK rigs or IK chain. It's just the only thing inside our technical tech, tentacle rig. Uh, for those who like hentai, whatever, I probably just got flagged again <laughs> just for mentioning that word. Uh, I watch a lot of anime, so the idea of tentacles, you know what they mean. All right. <laughs> so enough being a perv. Um, so we're going to do our inverse kinematics, right? So we, we have our target. Do we have our target? I have, have do have a target right here. I made it a global function. I don't know why. In pre later, later videos, I passed in the target. I guess this is like the prototype of um, version. I didn't really clean it up too much. So we have a point. We're going to display the point so we can see it in, in space. And we want our chain to basically do the in, figure out all the targets to get to that point. Uh, <clears throat> so I just call it inverse chain. Um... So I create a, an array of positions that I want to point at. The last point is going to be um, the actual can, essentially. That's the last target. And then by using that, um, you know, like I said, it's it's pretty much everything I just explained, but in code form. Um, you got to figure out the world's 
the world position. So based on the bone, if the bone has a has a parent, you need its world position. Else you use the current bone's world position, uh, like uh, dual quintorian, to transform. Um, this does not count the world position of the model, because you got to remember this is just positions. This is even though I call it world position this is world position in relation to local space um the mesh can be moved like say if it's a, if it's a body and the body is moving in 3d space it's going to have an entity transform so you might have to take this world position and multiply it by the, the entity's world position so this way you get the full real world position just keep that in mind. This is all local space. I'm not dealing with real world space. Okay, this is all, even though it says world space, it's really local space. <laughs> um, it, they call it world space because it's, it's, it's a transform hierarchy. So it's, it's, not, it's not the true local space of that joint. It's the parent plus it's local. So that's kind of world space, but it's world space lo localized. It's hard. I, it's, I know this, this is crazy. It's, it's insane, but just trust me that <laughs> this is all, even though it's considered world space, it's still local to the, the original location of the mesh of the entity. The entity still exists on origin. Once you have to, like I said, you have to take into account that the, when the entity moves off of origin, you need to add that position to this to get the real world space so you can actually target everything correctly. So with that disclaimer out of the way, because I didn't add that code here, uh, I just want to keep things simple. Uh, I just want, like I said, I just want to keep it as sim simple as possible. Uh, but I just want to do know in case you're moving the characters around, like, why isn't this working? You have to take note the entity's world uh, position as well so you need to add you have to add them together and with, with quintorians you add them by multiplying each other so you get the dual quintorian uh so you need to kind of cre create a dual quintorian um value from your uh entity framework because the, the the entity framework transform actually uses um transfer matrices instead of dual quintorians so you, you take the two dual quintorians you multiply together and they're kind of added up so uh, just make sure the right order. I'm not exactly sure. If it doesn't work one way, flip it and it'll work. I make that mistake all the time. So, world space. We're here. All right. Now we know the end point. So, the idea is... I erased everything. <laughs> so, we know we have the end point of the bone, right? We went, like, Basically, we're trying to find the elbow. So, we have the target, which is the last target that I added take that world position minus that's the new position that's actually the vector the link the direction vector then i normalize i scale it by length of the bone and then i add it back to the original target so this way i know where the elbow is supposed to be so that's all in one um, line of chain of code does all that in one go and then you save that new position as one minus the current um one that the current target you're using and that's it and that's that's the entire algorithm that's that's um the inverse part of inverse kinematics okay so if i go here go here go here there it is so there's our end target that's where one point supposed to be and that's where the other point supposed to be this is supposed to point here, this is supposed to point here, and this is supposed to point here. So you can kind of see what all the lines are. And now you do the forward kinematics. And the forward kinematics that we've, I don't know if I've done this in other videos, but the idea is the same thing. Well, now we go backwards on the chain and we pass in um, you know, we pass in the chain, the 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 the, the joints list that we want, and then the targets that we want to do it. Uh, so now we save some variables up here. Again, we do the same thing. We need to figure out the world position. Um, so I just do transform into world position depending on which world position I use. I draw the line. I do the subtract which creates that direction vector and then use and then use that direction vector 
to uh, to create a look rotation. So this creates a nice rotation to it. This line is very important, but I'll I'll, I'll explain it later. Um, now here's the here's the high, the little dicey part when we were doing everything. So now we know the direction, right? If there's no parent joint, we're good. We're done. If if this is a child joint to a parent joint, we need to take the 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 parent's world pos world rotation. Oh, actually, it's whole world rotation, whole world position too. It it's whole world dual contouring value, and we need to invert it. Um. Let me illustrate what we're doing because this might be a little, like I said, a little complicated. Um, let's see. How do I illustrate this? Here's our can. So we're trying to get there, right? Uh, so let's say we... we um, just by process of an elimination, we end up having our elbow here. Let's say we, I don't know, this is not a great example. Not a great example. Can I use my eraser here? Oh, yeah, I can use eraser. Sweet. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, I want to make it easier. I don't know. All right, you know what? Let me do it here. I want to get this to here, right? So let's say our inverse kinematics makes our elbow point here, right? So this is zero degrees, and this is 45 degrees. This point needs to go here. It needs to go 90 degrees, right? To get Essentially, for this point to touch that thing, it's 90 degrees. But the thing is, if this thing needs to go 90 degrees, that's fine, but... This one, the the parent joint, this bone in here, is already already moved forty five degrees. So we need to take that forty five degrees, subtract it by the ninety degrees that this thing needs to go to, and say, just give me forty five degrees. Because if we gave it, uh, I, I I illustrated this really wrong. <laughs> My angles are so off. Because I think if it's here. 45 degrees should be here, ideally. So, but you get, you get let me try one more time. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So, we're at zero degrees. The first joint, because remember, everything is a hierarchy. So, the first joint. Um, rotates 45 degrees. But we need the, the final point to be here at at 90 degrees. So so we don't we so let's say this needs to go 45 and this one needs to go 90. We can't do 90 because if because of the point here. It needs to go. It's already at 90. Damn it. I'm just, I'm I'm confusing the same thing over again. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, because that's that's nine that's uh that's ninety degrees. So to get to here is ninety degrees. I don't know why. Why am I so confused? Because it's like I'm just like it's it's when you're doing with local and then everything else. Ah. Damn, I just can't. I can't visualize how to illustrate it. Um, I'm getting. I'm getting this real wrong. I don't know why. Like, I know. Like, let's. Like, say, I need to go 90 degrees, and the parent joint array went 45. I don't want to go full 90 for the child. So the child has to take, subtract the parent's degrees from where it wants to go. So this way, it then um, calculates correctly you know it's like like you want to go full 90 degrees but your array went your array 45 degrees array there so you just instead of going fully 90 you just go another 45 um but for some reason i can't illustrate it in a 2d way i don't know why because i think it's the look rotation i think that's what i'm confusing me with it's the look rotation that i'm dealing with and that's a little tricky that's why i'm doing it that way
because if the look rotation's here, I'm there. That means the other point is looking here. That's a 90 degree. But if I move 90 degrees, it's fine. It, it makes it makes sense. It just goes that way. Because uh, I didn't just need to rotate this by 90. Yeah, no, but that's not how it works. It doesn't work that way uh, with rotation. I just, I'm sorry. I just, for, I'm so out of it today. I can't illustrate it. Damn it. All right. Maybe I wrote the notes for myself. Then use it as a way to subtract rotation. Maybe I'll just comment it out and see how it looks. So, um, so yeah, if it move, rotates 90, because it's all based on a, a, a look rotation. So the look rotation isn't exactly the same thing. Maybe if I see it in here. Because that's the look rotation, and that that look rotation. So to just to get that little, because this, because that the rotation here is very small in comparison to that one. Is it? It's hard to tell. No, it's about the same. But I'm also twisting it that way. So, uh, you know what? Like I said, let me comment it out so I can actually visually see it. And then we kind of see why it, it doesn't uh, work. And of course, everything works as it's just, get, get rid of this thing. It's going to get on my nerves. <laughs> oh my God. Hmm. Because the world position, and I'm, I'm doing a look rotation. Oh, you know what might be screwing me up? Because I have that other thing commented out. That's probably what's screwing me up. Maybe that's because of this. Now, as you can see, these are the points that I'm kind of need to get to, right? But these aren't moving because the forward direction is actually the the green line. The green line is the forward direction. But the bones point up. So we want the, the the look rotation to point where the bone is. The the we want the, the up is the up point to point forward. To do that is you need to add an offset. So you need a quintorian that can rotate forward into the up position. So I use uh, the left axis axis and then do a ninety degree rotation. And that allows a forward point to look forward in the up direction. So once I allow that to happen, the bones now point in the exact direction it needs to look at. Because now the the look the for, the the look uh, direction is the up direction. Because the look direction, the look direction that's calculated is always just the forward direction. Um, I can probably create a new look function that points upward. Uh, that might be better, so this way you don't need to do an offset. Um, but like I said, that's you have to rewrite a new function primarily just to do look rotations and the up direction. Uh, but as you can see, we got pretty close to our our points. Now. Let me comment this out and see what it looks like when I don't add it up. I know it. Refresh. Yeah. See, like I said, it, it it's in really important, but you need to kind of like subtract. And it's. I think the well, problem is I'm trying to tr uh, explain it to you in in angles, and quintorians aren't necessarily angles; they're they're axis of rotation. So I need to, so you need to kind of subtract axes of rotation. So if like this one's already rotated a certain amount, this one is trying to rotate in that certain amount too. It's doing it. It's it's instead of pointing here, it's pointing there. But I need to take away its parent rotation 
to kind of offset that that direction. The same thing with this one. This one's rotating by a certain amount, but its its local is being added to the parent. So you kind of like you need to do a subtraction. You need to take an offset. So like I say, you take the you make the inverse of world, and then you multiply the rotation by the inverse, which gives you the new rotation. And it's basically how you subtract quintorians. So I said, this is kind of a little dicey. I'm sorry I really screwed up this part. It's, it, quinturians is a very difficult thing to to get fully understanding of. I'm like not, not all the way there yet. Like I'm trying to use something that I fully don't understand yet. And I absolutely don't understand the math part of how it works. Like I understand what it is. It's it's, a, And I, I can use it <laughs> for the most part. Um, but yeah, this was like the tricky part. It was like everything was screwed up. And it's like, well, if you subtract... The parent, everything kind of lines up correctly. So I put that back and done. And like I said, you can repeat this process. So like I said, right now, I just say, let's just do this over again four times. And I sh by four times, it should be now touching our target. And here's all the blue dots and red dots, all the way, all the... It all, everything it took to get to that that endpoint, and uh, like I said, we can always move our target anywhere we want. Uh, let's see, we can move this up, maybe up to four, maybe do two, maybe do a negative, do a refresh, and now it's over there. Let's uh, let's make it go higher. Let's go do nine refresh and there you go now it's too far <laughs> and you can still rotate you can still do it um as you see it'll never reach there because that point is still too far away but even if you do inverse kinematics and just do a, a limit you'll still get there but like i said you should always do that little check because if you're in there's no point in doing all that all that math when it's all you know is that you all you need is the everything to on uh, the all the rotations, like in this case, all rotations need to be reset to zero, like uh, to identity, and then just rotate the look. Uh, do a look rotation on the the shoulder joint, and that that points directly in. So everything be perfectly straight, and you're done. So, um, but I say identity because of this case. If you have like an arm, you might need like a the bind rotation. Like the starting position, uh, the the starting point of the the rotation, um, or you set up like a, a T pose, so this way you can you know how to make the arm straight. Uh, unless your model is already in a T pose, then you use the bind rotation. Um, but yeah, sorry about the 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 understanding. That part is really hard for me to explain because, like I said, I don't fully understand the whole adding rotations in three-dimensional with the quintorians um but it's like it's 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 essentially like that like if you need to go 90 degrees but the parent already went 45 then you only need to go another 45 you don't need to go full 90 so it's 45 45 adds up to 90 so that's what i'm doing i'm kind of subtracting the, root, the parent rotation from the child the, the new child rotation so this way it kind of points in the right direction Okay, so that is the basics of uh, inverse kinematics, and I didn't do it, but if you want to, you can always animate the point, have the point move around, and every time the point moves, you calculate the new inverse kinematics, and you just apply it, and you're done. So you animate it. And like I said, the, the only big piece, really, and I think that's probably why I didn't notice it, uh, had issues, is because I needed to add um, the forward to up conversion. So this way, forward becomes up direction. So that's the tricky part. Because um, unless you build a bone system where the bone always points forward, so it's laying forward, laying in the forward direction. So there's no up position. Like it's not pointing up. It's pointing forward. And then you probably can get away with it. But I think everything kind of comes in already that way. I'm not sure. Um, probably not, because I, I, I didn't have this stuff before. And I've been I've loaded in models before and got the rotation just fine. I think it's just because of my model system. 
um, to make the, the bones point in the right direction. I might actually not need this at all if I'm actually modeling meshes. I haven't gone to the me modeling meshes using this new system yet. So this might not be needed, but might be only needed when I'm actually re um, representing the bones. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, I, like I said, I don't know if I need this or not, but I need that part for now. Just keep that in mind. We're still in development, still trying to figure out how all this works. And we got all this nicely visualized, all that crazy path work. So I made a fool of myself enough for, for, for one video. So this is the basics of inverse kinematics. It's the FAB IK uh, algorithm. Like I said, it really should be called maybe the back IK because it's backwards and forwards, not forwards and backwards. Uh, the order of operation. So I guess I'll see you guys. Oh, still recording. So I'll see you guys in the next video when we start doing more advanced stuff with uh, our IK rigs.